a lot of golfers simply can't get going and improve because they just get too far off track when it comes to their grip. So right after this, let's talk a little bit more in depth on the right hand and specifically the right thumb and the right index finger. And let me see if I can give you some good visuals and mental imagery that's going to help you solidify your grip for more speed and face control. Stay tuned. So I think the imagery or the analogy that really goes well with how you're going to grip this with these two fingers is kind of like the way you would hold a firearm. You would take your thumb and you could use your thumb to to pull back or cock the hammer and then your index finger would be on the trigger. So even if you're not a gun enthusiast, you can still have your squirt gun or what have you. You can pretend that your hand is on the trigger and it's in position to fire. So my thumb's going to look like this. My index is going to look like that. And this ends, makes me end up in kind of a mold. So let's get a little closer look at that mold I'm talking about. So let me see if I can show this to you from a few different angles. So I've got my hand in this mold here. You can see here's my, here's my trigger position. And you notice as I turn it towards you, there's the position there. You notice that I've got this married to the side of the hand all the way till the last joint of the thumb, which kind of separates it into a little bit of a V, but it's really married. Now, when I start to fit the grip in here, watch how this forms, how this gets on here. I'm going to place the club's grip in the second pad, very squarely in the second pad of my index finger. And I'm going to wrap these three pads around it in what I would call a vacuum seal, kind of like a really tight burrito to where you couldn't poke anything, even a toothpick couldn't get in there. So it's a nice vacuum seal there. Okay, and then the thumb is going to get put on. Notice the thumb is not quite at 12 o'clock. The thumb is a little more at 11.30. Some people might have it at 11, but anywhere between 11 and 11.45 is probably going to be somewhere in the neutral zone here. And what this is giving me, it's giving me a chance with this pad right here to from the top of the swing really have a, a source of push, really have a source to push or leverage some torque into that grip and speed up the club head. And I believe you've got the thumb here in this position to where you've got these ultra sensitive nerve endings in the thumb here. And you know, I see a lot of my students, they kind of leave the thumb hanging off the grip altogether. And I think that takes away some of your sensitivity towards what the face is doing. So we're going to get this, the corner of this thumb pad on there, just inside the logo of the grip. And that's going to really give me, and that's really going to attune me to the orientation of the club face. All right, so now zooming back out again, I'll set this down behind the ball. You can see how that grip is resting on there. So you're really looking for that crease to end up somewhere between the ear and the shoulder. If you're getting that thing like this too much and the crease is up by your chin, it's a good chance you're going to struggle with the ball going to the right or leaving the face open. And of course, conversely, if you see too many knuckles here and that crease or that V is pointing outside the shoulder, well, a lot of good players have have hit fades from there, but you don't necessarily want to learn how to be that guy. So until you really learn to master the golf swing, it's better off just to adhere to textbook rules just a little bit more. All right, so let's look how I'm going to form this together with the left hand now. I'm going to get this on here. You see I'm going to, again, rest it on the second pad. Uh, burrito with the three pads of the index. Get those ultra sensitive pads at the end of the thumb pad on there just to the left of the logo and I have a very tight crease that divides into a V at the very last joint and that'll end up looking just like that and that's a pretty good neutral grip right there. And let's take a little closer look at forming the whole thing. So once my left is on Again, I'm going to reach under, 
first find the second pad of my index, make sure that that is vacuum sealed, get the thumb on, and I've got this tight crease, and we're looking at a pretty good grip right here. All right, so let me see if I can put this right hand grip, trigger grip into action. Go through step by step. The process becomes faster the more you do it. Remember, it's a trigger idea. Gonna wrap the burrito, touch with the thumb, tight with the crease. Here we go. To sum up, really nothing you do to create power through the ground or the turning of the body or the whipping of the wrist is going to make this club head go faster unless you've got a really efficient grip on there that can transmit all this, transmit all this torque that you're producing and cause it to speed up the club head. But not only that, but give you a real good high sensitivity on where that club face is in space so you can better control it. Now this is not something you have to practice on the range. You can practice this in the living room, just simply sitting on the sofa watching TV. There's my mold. Slide it right on there and I'm good. Take it off, there's my mold again. Pulling the trigger, slide it right on and I'm good. You can do that a hundred times just fidgeting in one TV show. All right, so hopefully that helps you shore up some fundamentals with your grip and setup, and you're gonna be on your way to hitting it longer and straighter. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve, and as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.